Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Oh, we bless God for, for what He's doing in our lives. The most important thing that the Spirit of God does to us is to bring us the truth of God's mind concerning every situation. That's why we have been given the Spirit. We've not just been given the Holy Spirit so that we can speak in tongues and, and, and do miracles. Most importantly, the work of the Holy Spirit is to guide our minds, to make our minds one with the mind of God. Praise God. So if that's not happening in your life, no matter what you're doing, I think you, are, you stand the risk of being rejected even at the last day. Remember last month I told you what, um, what um, you know, it says iniquity. I told you what iniquity is when Jesus said, um, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Iniquity is not just fornication, lying, and, and, and stealing. Iniquity is deeper than that. Any work that is not approved by God, any work that is not inspired by the Holy Ghost is iniquity. Now, of course, you know, fornication is not inspired by the Holy Ghost. Lying and cheating is not insp inspired by the Holy Ghost. You understand? But you see, sometimes we, we just run to those things and say, that is it. But you don't realize that going into ministry without God calling you into it, you are a worker of iniquity. Doing a business that God has not told you or taught you or commanded you to do, you are working in iniquity. You don't think about that as iniquity. See, because I remember telling you, even as small as um, doing something, creating something without the instruction of the Spirit of God, it's iniquity. So that's the, that's the reason I share all these things with you, so that your mind will grow to begin to think and examine things just like God, praise God. So I've got a lot I want to talk to you about even today. But before we go on, you know what we do on this broadcast. We make demands for our daily bread. Are you ready? Join me right now and say, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. It is coming to me and it's coming to me freely in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. So we were looking at this, the, the, uh, the, the topic this week, the covenants. So we are at our text is from First Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 15. David speaking here, he says, remember, that's verse 15, First Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 15. David speaking here, he says, remember his covenant forever. Old King James puts it this way. Be mindful of his covenant. Be mindful of his covenant. Now, there are two ways I love to explain that word mindful. Mindful means your mind is full of. See, now another way to understand it is saying, say, be mindful. It's like saying to somebody, be mindful of that chair that is there. So the person is saying, um, walk in such a way that you, you remember that there is a chair there so you don't destroy it or you don't hit yourself. You understand what I'm saying? So, hey, be mindful of that chair over there, okay? So what you're saying, you're actually saying the same thing. Fill your mind with the chair over there in whatever you are doing, see? Fill your mind that there is a chair there. So it will help you know how to navigate that area. And then also, be, don't, don't walk in such a way that you forget that there is a chair there. So you don't get it. So you're saying the same thing, see? But then different, you're looking at it from different points. Now someone will look at it and say, oh, why didn't you just say it? But you're saying the same thing. So this is why understanding is very important. And hear me. It's the problem most times is not the one who's speaking. The problem is the one who's listening. The one who's listening is the one that needs to get understanding. Sometimes when people communicate, they may use the wrong words, they may use the wrong tone. But the listener is the one that is very important because the listener is the one that will most likely reacts. See, 
even it, they use this in every kind of relationship, use this kind in, in marriage, in every kind of relation. Sometimes um, um, spouse get into, a, it's unnecessary. And by the time you look at it deeply, you realize that just lack of understanding. Lack of understanding from the listener, see. You understand what I'm talking about? So a husband and wife, for example, the wife say, see your big head. And then the man goes, can you imagine? My wife insulted me today. I said, what did she do? She said, see my big head. Now someone hearing that says, sorry, say, who said it? Say my wife. And the person starts laughing, say, ha, can't somebody play with you? He said, no, 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 it's not a play. I don't take that as play at all. It's see finish. How can a woman is saying now he's responding to his understanding. He's not responding to what his wife said. See? And a big fight can come out of that whole situation. Meanwhile, by the time you get down to the wife, you said, why would you call your husband big head? Like, really? how did I call him? Big? Well, no, you said see your big head. Like when? Say this morning. And then she tries to remember. And then she starts laughing. I said, why are you laughing? He said, come on now. I was just joking with my husband. I said, you know how you say, go out, go away, stop that. No, no, I said, like, hey, you see your big head. And I said, I don't like that. I don't like that. Why don't you like that? Now, we may start arguing, hey, but the wife too should not speak like that. The wife, and they say, the problem is not the speaking. The problem is the understanding. See? So most times we attack the speaker. Hey, you shouldn't have spoken that way. You, you shouldn't have spoken. What about attacking the understanding? Why don't you understand things in a broader form? And most times understanding is affected by the limitation of your, of your mind. Most times you realize about life. Why, oh Lord Jesus. You know, sometimes we just start this broadcast and, and, and the Holy Spirit just starts taking us. <laughs> I know when I'm very enough. But, but sometimes I want to you know, pull it back. But I feel, because see, I'm, I'm speaking to different people. And at, this, at a certain time, you don't know what you're ministering to. So it depends on who's watch, who the Holy Ghost knows will be watching at that time. So you see, we, we attack the speaker. You shouldn't have talked that way. You shouldn't have understood that way. Or you shouldn't have um, spoken that way. You shouldn't have acted that way. But then we leave the one who understood it wrongly. And like I said, the, the person who understands mostly is the one who needs to broaden, who needs to expand, who needs to grow bigger. Because this is life for you. The way you understood things 10 years ago is not the same way you understood. You understand things today. Now, what's the difference? Experience have happened. Experience have happened. So what really happened? You grew. See? You grew. So the problem is not the situation that happened. The problem is how you understood the situation. So most times, instead of acting rashly, why don't you pause? And think for a moment, if I grow some more, is this I'm still going to see this thing? See? So it's the same thing with the Bible. This Bible is written. You can't change the words that have been written. But sometimes we argue what we read because of our kind of understanding. And most times, some people are not ready to broaden them, their minds. Some people are not ready to grow and expand. Now, expansion means taking into cognizance different aspects of a thing. So you want to stick to your own and say, it must be this, if not. But hey, your, your thoughts, your, your mindset must grow to the point where it accommodates everything into it. You realize then that you're giving a bigger or a better judgment of issues. Than when your mind is just closed. So you find somebody say, in our culture, it is wrong. See, there is a time in the church world here in, in, in Nigeria. Let me use the one I'm sure of. Here in Nigeria, there was a time in the church world you would crucify a lady for. 
even to you know people still have that mindset like no a, a lady should not wear trousers and now when you when you ask them why shouldn't a lady wear trousers they will quote the bible for you and say the bible said a woman should not wear that which pertains to a man now the bible did not say trouser are you listening to me? The Bible did not say a woman should not wear trousers. The Bible said a woman should not wear that which pertains to man. So because where you live, where you dwell, men wear trousers. And women maybe wear gowns and tie, uh, wear skirts and, and things like that. So you, you instead of um, understanding the scripture, understanding what it says, you now give your own myopic uh, you know, experience in life to understanding that scripture. And so you now put trousers in there because your experience in life is men wear trousers. Okay. Now here is where the problem is. You take that same scripture to a far community where women wear trousers and men wear gowns. Yes. See. Like, like I read somewhere that trousers, they began to make trousers because I think trousers was first. I don't know how true that is. I don't, I don't, uh, I can't say I'm very, very certain. But I, I read that um, the trouser making began in China and they started making them for women, for ladies because when ladies began to work in the factories and in the farms they just felt they needed to sew something that would cover them properly is it India or China one of them right now you see the purpose for the trouser for that community let, let's let's even assume that was not the first but I'm talking about this specific community now and then they felt look so that women will be more comfortable let's make um, dresses for them that the legs are cut in between you know you know what I mean sewn so they can express their open their legs and do what they need to do without minding that um, they're going to expose themselves you understand what I'm talking about so now you take the same scripture to that community and what does the scripture read a woman should know where that which pertains to a man and a preacher there now says a man you're not supposed to wear trousers now, you are from a community that men wear trousers and women don't wear in, in trousers. You now say, women, you're not supposed to wear trousers. And over there in that community, no, men are not supposed to wear trousers. And then both of you begin to argue. No, you don't understand the Bible. You don't, no, both of you don't understand the Bible. You see? And why don't you understand the Bible? Because your experience has been limited. The Bible will not change because of both of you. So what happens, this fellow now travels to another community and he sees men wearing skirts. And he's confused, like, ah. so now you're left to say, all these people are sinners. And then you go to another community and say, everybody here is a sinner. Then you realize that you're the one shouting, everybody is a sinner. And one day, now you've gone and experienced a whole lot of things. And someone had educated you that oh this is why we wear, our women wear trousers because they need to be protected they need to be safe and then you reason it and say actually it's true i think women feel more comfortable wearing trousers but then you have a challenge i don't i don't want to discard the word of god in my mind no no i will not accept this new culture that you're trying to bring to me then all this while the holy ghost is there and he's saying nothing to you because you've not even consulted him. Praise God. Yeah. You see, a lot of times we have this challenge. We don't consult the Holy Spirit. We think we're smart. And we try to do things with our smartness. And not knowing that we are running ourselves aground into error and error and error. So, you now go and say, but God cannot make mistake now. I cannot be smarter than God. Now, when, when, when your head is correct, okay. Like, but I cannot be smarter than why. Why am I thinking trousers is good for women? But, but the word of God says otherwise. Then that's when the Holy Ghost will now whisper something to you. Go and read that scripture again. No, I know it. I've read it. Go and read that scripture again. And then you humble yourself and go open that verse of scripture. And it says, A woman should not wear that which pertains 
to a man. Now, for the first time in your life, it will hit your heart that he never mentioned trousers there. See? And then you're like, No, maybe another translation. Maybe another. No, there's a. Have you? I've seen people who argue that way. So no, no. I think there's a translation that says trousers. Where? No, wait. Which which is your chance? Ah, oh, dear Lord Jesus. You know, sometimes I I just enjoy. Holy came and debrat ishkadabo nafarnikai. I remember one day. I had this argument with. I, I, I just wanted to. Um, I, I said it is all respect, praise God. You know how Jehovah Witness people, they go around preaching. So this this morning, you know, they, they knocked on my door and I opened and I saw the guy. You know, they come in groups, so I saw them. And I just felt, okay, I think I'm free. Let me listen. Yes, no, so let me just listen. So I came to uh, you know, share the good news, of, you know how they say it. Like, okay. So I said, all right. I came out, we sat down, and he began to talk and talk, and I was quiet, listening to him talk, then talk, then talk, then talk. Then. Sometimes it's good to listen to people preach to you, <laughs> praise God. And by the time he finished, so I said, okay. Um, sincerely, I just felt in my heart, let me, now he's preached to me, okay? So let me um, preach to him, see? And so I didn't tell him, okay, now that you preached to me, I'm a pastor, I want to preach to you too. No, I didn't say that. I just said, okay. You know he said, so, so and so, he said, yes, yes, yes. I said, okay, let's, let's look at it from the scriptures. And then we opened the scriptures, and we began. Then we got to a point where, <laughs> I showed him something from the scriptures. I won't tell you what, what it was because it was very funny. So I showed him something from the scriptures. And then he said, no, that cannot be in the scriptures. I said, sorry, uh, this, is, this is the Bible. And I said, please hold on. Can I see the back of your Bible? I opened it for him. I said, what do you want to check? He said, I want to check if it is the authorized, you know, King James Bible. You know, so we opened the first uh, page and then he saw authorized king james i was like so let me see that scripture again i showed it to him he read it and read it and said i said but that's what the the, the scripture says and then the guy said sorry i have that now that's his escape <laughs> i have an authorized bible in my house please i want to go home look at that my authorized bible and then I will come back and, and we'll have this discussion. He never came back. I knew he was not going to come back. But I left him with this. I said, see, take your time and read the scriptures for yourself with an open mind. Not with the mind that you have been indoctrinated into. Now, this happens not just the Jehovah Witness people. This happens to a lot. Of, now, now to, to be honest with you, there are a lot of right things that even the Jehovah Witness people teach. You see, that we used to be against then. But I say, as you grow in scripture, now this is what happens. You begin to realize that, oh, now I see what those people were trying to say. Not because, I, I needed to get this. Because this is relevant to what we're discussing. I'm, I'm, no, for the past three days now, I'm just building the foundation before we enter into the covenants proper. If you don't understand these foundations, you have a problem dealing with the things we're going to be talking about. So then, this is, this is several years after, you realize that, hey, concerning this thing that these Jehovah Witness people say, I think I understand where they were coming from. I understand where they, they were not altogether foolish or altogether wrong. I understand where they are coming from. But hey, I see where they stopped. The same thing with every other um, people who believe in the Bible. You know, we have different um, beliefs, and all in the same Bible. The Bible will never change because of us. Rather, we will grow to understand it better. And that's why I always say this. All these 
fighting, do this, don't do this. They are wrong. They are wrong. The Bible is not wrong, but your understanding is wrong. And sometimes when you see people take up, you know, I, I, I remember when the grace, uh, this, you know, that grace movement started and I saw the trajectory and I saw how it was going. I remember saying to somebody, I said, this message that these people are pushing, they will get stuck at some point. You know, you see, there is a truth to it. But when people start driving it as a passion, as a new passion, now you want to drive every other thought to fall in line with this, you will get stuck. And when you get stuck, the likelihood for you to start discarding the word of God as, as every other subject. Our time is up. Praise God. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Praise God. Oh, Father, we thank you. Your love is too great for us. And because you love us so much, you bring your understanding to us. Thank you for what you're doing, Lord. We give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.